Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Stupid Users Beta. In the game, Der Magiker, our villain, has basically set a virus to everybody in the complete the whole department. And what's happened is everybody has looked at that spam email virus and became zombies. Luckily though, the IT department, four powerful characters, Philip Wong, Cord Ryder, Nicole Myers, and Jones Crusher were actually not affected because they didn't check that spam. Smart people. You get to choose me one of the four different characters and cooperatively slash competitively fight against Der Magiker as you try to obtain your IT people and uh, your, your employees and bring them back into the game. If you can do that, you're going to successfully accomplish your mission. However, you might actually become a zombie throughout the game, which your objectives change just a little bit and you start trying to recruit the undead, all while still stopping Der Magiker. If you're able to acquire 10 employees or zombies at the end of the game, you're going to win. However, if anybody else does, they're going to win. Dura Magic can also win, and there's a bonus way to win as well. All right, let me go show you what the contents of the game are. The contents of the game are as follows. Philip Wong, Nicole Myers, Cord Rider, and Jones Crusher. They all come with their own unique decks of cards from both the beta and, of course, the black. The game also comes with Dura Magic, the main villain, and two decks of cards. You've got this zombie deck, which is his deck, and, of course, the IT deck, which is going to be used with all the other cards in the game. To start the game off, you're simply going to take one of the four characters, and you're going to have two to four players, which also comes with their unique decks like I was saying before. After you take the character, put it in front of you, as well as taking the cards that are with them, the black and the white cards, and shuffling them into the main two decks of the game. Set aside Der Magiker so that he can be all by his lonesome along with the cards he is required to have in front of him, and then begin the game with three IT cards. After everybody has those cards, the game is ready to begin. Here's what the setup for a two-player game is going to look like. Each player is going to have their black and their white decks. You're going to take both of these things and shuffle them into the main two decks. After you go ahead and do that, make sure you shuffle really well. Then you're also going to deal out cards to the different players. First of all, every player is going to get three of these cards here. And of course, Der Magiker, the bad guy or villain of the story, is going to get six, which you'll actually go ahead and reveal face up in front as his own little tableau. The other two characters, or three player, or two, or one character, depending on what you're playing, are going to get removed from the game. You won't be needing them or their decks of cards. After that, the game's ready to go, and you're going to choose a first player to start. After Der Magiker has a six cards, you're going to make sure there's no chaos events that are uh, unfolded. If they do pop out, just go ahead and discard them. They're not going to be used at the beginning of the game. Also, weapons are going to be used under Magicker. Go ahead and equip them instantly. If another weapon is to be drawn, that card gets discarded as long as he already has a weapon, except for his staff. That one always takes the place of any other weapon he equips. There's also cards called Beta Cards, B-E-T-A, and if any player gets those cards throughout the game, they're going to instantly win, including your Magicker. That's all you need to know. Okay, let's get started. So back to the game again, as you can see, we're ready to go. We have Der Magic equipped with a stapler, and of course, the Beta and Zed Zombies here, he is now in control of. He wants to acquire 10 guys, and he also wants to acquire Beta if he can. There's no Beta out right now, so that's not a big deal. These guys also want to acquire their 10. We're going to have Nicole Myers go first, so she's going to go ahead and draw a card as long as she has three cards or more. If she has less than three cards, she draws up to three cards. She drew her cards, she's going to look at her hand, and she can go ahead and choose to use any of them she wants as actions. It's free to use. He'll go, she'll go ahead and equip this weapon, a boring keyboard, but it gives her one attack, one crute. So she's got a one plus a one, which is two. If she had three of these symbols there, that's also going to give her a bonus attack. We have other weapons or actions, such as like this one right here, an extra plus one to attacking this turn if she wanted to use that. Epic loot, take any item from the discard pile. And finally, disarm, take any equipped item from any other player and discard it. So we can go ahead and keep these here. After she got ahead and drawn and played her cards, she can then attack any, any zombies she wants in the field. Uh, so first of all, she can attack the Der Magiker. And why would she do that? Well, because if she attacks him, he will not be able to take his action this turn, and that's very important to do so. The top left, top right hand corner of each of these guys is their power, and then her power slash recruit attack is going to be based on her weapon and her abilities. So she's got two, this is a two and a two and a three. She can't kill this guy, however, she can destroy this beta zombie. Destroying zombies is really important, so she's going to go ahead and do that, thus limiting Der Magiker from winning the game. When you kill something, you're going to get uh, cards equal to uh, X minus one of their powers. This is a two, so it would be uh, two minus one, which is one. It gets to draw this one extra card here. And then after that, if she doesn't want to play anything else, she's going to pass. You can only attack one uh, player or uh, recruit one player per turn. So after she's done, the next player is going to get to it, which is Jones Crusher. Now, Der Magiker would actually take his turn, provided she didn't destroy one of his minions. 
minions. But because she messed with him, he's just going to chill. Jones is up now and he's gonna look at his hand. He's got stuff like instant actions, which you can block an attack or a recruit. Another rallying cry, which is a plus one. And then a beta component. You can go ahead and simply play this out in a tableau. That's one of four needed for him to win the game. Also, he's gonna, of course, get to draw his card at the beginning of the turn. Ooh, that's a nice one right there. It requires a power of two or uh, two to attack or recruit though. But when he does get that, it will actually require a power of three because it's specifically his, but he'll get two of these, which just counts uh, for this ability to not be disarmed. Pretty useful. Unfortunately for him, he only has one power and these guys are a little stronger than that. So he can't attack this. He has no one to recruit from her. And thusly, Dermagicker is gonna take his turn at the end of his turn. So Dermagicker is going to draw a card from the deck based on their power. And that's what zombies do. He's gonna flip over one. That's his weapon right there, the Dermagicker staff. And he's gonna go ahead and equip that. This will get removed. Otherwise, if it was any other weapon, it would just get discarded. And then one more card's gonna come out, a chaos action. All champions um, are disarmed. So anybody who has a weapon is going to lose it. So that's very important that this guy here uh, cannot be infected or disarmed when he's got three. So pretty useful there. This is gonna go ahead and get discarded. Anytime a chaos action pops up, that's what's going to happen. And the next player is going to go and it's gonna continue just like that. Sometimes you're gonna run into cards like this called infected, which means that if you draw it, you're going to become a zombie. In which case you're gonna function very similar to Dermagicker, playing cards and utilizing their activate abilities based on your attack as how many cards you'll be drawing from this deck as opposed to this one. This is an IT deck and this is the zombie deck. And you'll be doing the same thing to try and win the game. However, you can start messing with IT players based on the zombies. Some of the zombies abilities are uh, all IT players lose their draw phase the next turn and so on and so forth. But that's the basic idea of the game going back and forth trying to either gather your beta parts or trying to recruit 10 either zombies or employees. All right, let's talk about it. So what do I think about stupid users beta? Well, first of all, all the characters are cool because they all have their own unique ability provided they have the if they can get their three symbols, which is really cool. Not only that, they all turn into zombies and they all have their own unique zombie ability. That means they can get rid of certain cards of their symbol and they can do certain things like draw cards. There are two of the decks in the game, which we talked about the IT deck. And of course we got the zombie deck. As a zombie player, utilizing the zombie activated abilities are good, especially the ongoing ones. You got stuff like the Zed Zombie Top Chef where you can devour one minion of your choice from an IT player. You got stuff like you can swap a minion with this guy here and then activate it, which is really powerful because you can use any zombie or minion that the uh, Dermagicker has. Beta zombies, a champion cannot be disarmed or stolen from. A Zed zombie, take three minions from Dermagicker. So you can kind of in interact with some different combinations of cards. In the IT deck, it's a little less powerful, I'd say, but it's what you start off with throughout the game. Nobody's a zombie to begin with, but you'll definitely likely turn, well, you'll, you're very definitely gonna turn into one. Uh, at least one of you guys will throughout the game. But they have cool stuff, like you can patch a zombie player and then draw an IT card deck, steal any equipped item from a player, all zombie players lose their draw phase for a turn, plus one attack, a ton of plus one attacks, and some of their abilities let you dual weapons and whatnot. So there is a plethora of different things you can utilize in the game. It's basically a tableau management take that game that is semi-cooperative, and because you're basically trying to stop your magicker because he can beat you all all by himself if you kind of let him do what he wants. You have to mess with him. If you keep messing with each other, it's going to cost you and it's likely going to make you lose the game. However, if you continue to mess with Dermagicker, another player might try and sideswipe and start getting some uh, diff additional units from you or other players in the game and they can start kind of build up. So you have to kind of balance this whole thing going on. It's kind of random. It has a little bit of that take that aspect and not only that, but you can get infected and then if you don't have a block or an armor card, you can suffer the uh, zombie effect and you have to become a zombie and mess with all the players and be drawing from the zombie deck. Realistically though, being a zombie is pretty cool as well. I do like that aspect of the game and you can still win that way, but you're gonna have to lose a bunch of your stuff. You go down to three employees. So sometimes players are gonna wanna try and make you become infected if they can, because it's going to mess with you and you're going to uh, go from first place all the way to last place. But like I said, you can come back. Another interesting aspect is the beta components that can actually make you win the game in an all unique aspect because you're trying to go for the parts as opposed to deal with the minions and the employees. Recruiting from other players is cool as IT, but dealing with their magic is very important as well. It has that interesting cooperative nature and that competitive nature all boiled into one. However, if you don't like take that games, you're not going to like this game because it has a lot of take that characteristics. If you do like semi-cooperative though, it's definitely going to be up your alley. Uh, the art is reminiscent of the uh, graphic novel, which is also introduced in the Kickstarter campaign, which is what I'm very, very interested in because I like the 
feeling of the story where you're basically IT dealing with the zombie outbreak due to somebody putting a virus into the company. That is a such a cool and interesting story and all the characters have their own unique thing. Definitely, definitely get the graphic novel if you're going to pick up the game as well because I think that's where it's really going to shine and bring out a lot of the story that you might be missing in the game playing it as it is. Because the theme is probably only going to come out provided you know the actual story of the game. If you have a Spider-Man game and you've never heard of Spider-Man, you're going to lose track of the theme. So definitely be aware of that. Overall though, the game is really fun and really enjoyable. If you don't mind, take that. You like a little aggressive competition? Definitely check out Stupid Users Beta. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help me to greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Stupid Users Beta. I hope you like the way we did this video. It's a little change. We might be changing the method, provided I like it to this new format, a little more energetic, a little quicker pace. But overall, I think it's more uh, more valuable to be quick and explain things really nicely. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists. Right now we're giving away Fires of Eidolon by Magic Meeple. It is a really solid game, similar to uh, Forbidden Island, but it's better. It's a killer, in my opinion, of that game. Also, go check out our friends. The Giveaway Geek, as well as checking out Kess, another great company that has some really great games. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. As always, I look forward to dealing with the zombie apocalypse in an IT-related field next time.